No rent, a tent and a camera. Backpack in Britain. This is my journey, walking from John Groats in Scotland to Land's End in England. Solo. Yes, I had to run back for the phone every time I wanted to get a shot like that. This is the tent I'd be using. Here's a camera and a drone. Drone for aerial shots. And I converted and live in my van. That's a no rent part, by the way. The food. I usually eat pretty good at home, but with the energy I'd be burning in the next couple of months, I figured out anything and everything was on the menu. Chocolate bars, fish and chips, fizzy drinks, wild fruit, you name it. Oh, and beer. Lots of it. I'd set up camp wherever my backpack was placed at the end of that day. Mainly farmers' fields, forests and walking paths. But mainly farmers' fields. I'm sorry, farmers. I forgot to mention, I'm Liam, by the way. Grab some popcorn, put your feet up, and just enjoy the journey. Before I could even set off walking, I had to get a train from Crewe to Inverness, which was around nine hours. And then I had a two hour stop over in Inverness, and then it was like three hours to Wick train station. And then from Wick, I had to get a two hour bus to John O'Groats. I finally made it to the famous John O'Groats signpost. Pretty knackered though. After a quick selfie with a signpost and 1,200 miles ahead of me, the only thing left to do was to start walking. The route I chose to take when planning the walk was to take the John O'Groats coastal path, which would take me around the coast all the way to Inverness, and that's around 100 miles. It wasn't long before I started to see the beautiful, rugged Scottish coast. After a few miles of walking that evening, I'm bumping into an abandoned horse plough, which is weird. I decided to set up camp right on the edge of the cliffs. First camp of the journey then. So, yeah, that's it. Just a standard one-man tent. But wow, <laughs> amazing. Just wild camping in Scotland, as you do. Look at the ocean, amazing. Um, I feel so lucky. The Highland Midge is a species of small flying insect that swarms in their thousands and bites you whenever it gets the chance. This would become the bane of my existence while in Scotland. For anybody wondering what I'm eating, so I bought six of these and just some snacks I brought. So about three or four days of food. Um, yeah, rather than bring my jet boil and gas, which is extra weight, I ditched it last minute. Took out my backpack, saved a kilo, and I'm gonna cold soak stuff. So it won't be that nice, but it doesn't matter. I've, I've saved weight. I set off the next morning feeling fresh and ready to get some miles under my legs. I come to find out though that the coastal path it was overgrown and pretty damn impenetrable. So I decided to take the A9 road that goes from John O'Groats all the way to Inverness. I didn't know at the time but I was in for a horrendous next few days of road walking. <laughs> First bit of rain I've had and um, all my waterproof gear is on, you can see there. But it wasn't too bad, it's pretty warm now so I'm going to have to take it off again. But this is Scotland for you. Back on, back off. That's, it's going to be like that the whole trip. I know where I'm staying today. I've been along this road for miles and miles without finding any spot, suitable anyway. And I come across this abandoned building. This was open, so they must've got through that way. But I've set the tent up. Don't have to worry about the rain. No midges about, perfect. It's just, you know, the little things in life make it perfect. I was struggling at the end of this. Like I was so close to being like, oh no, I need to stop. And I came across this little gem. The next few days, the weather started to look a lot better fueled by some of the best fish and chips I've ever had. Passed through some small towns and villages, slowly but surely making my way to Inverness. I'm a bit bored, so I've been playing the game. Look how much change I can find on the floor, on like the side of the road. And I've found a pound so far. So that'll go towards a can of coke. Another one pound coin. Yeah. 
you know, one thing I miss about normal life, let's say, is blueberries. Without fail, I eat a couple handfuls of blueberries every day for the past few years. I love them and I feel healthy eating them. Yeah, I'm missing them. I really feel like some. But guess what? I've set my tent up in such a random place and I think I found some wild blueberries. Have a look at this. So we're here. This is my tent. I was just looking at my feet for blisters. Right across here, I was like, no, no. Blueberries. I've searched them up on Google. They look like them. I've tasted one already. Oh my God. Fresh Scottish blueberries. I cannot believe it. They're all over the place. So in the morning, I'm going to be eating these. Feeling revitalised from the blueberries, I set off the next morning determined to get off the A9 road as quickly as possible. I was sick of it. The goal was to do 20 miles a day, and by this time, there was a heat wave approaching the UK. After over 100 miles on the A9 road, I crossed the bridge to get into Inverness. This is where I could join on to the Great Glen Way. The Great Glen Way stretches for 118 kilometers from Inverness to Fort William and follows along Loch Ness as well as the Caledonian Canal. This is the part I was looking forward to. Slept right there under this massive tree last night. Good sleep, nice and cool. And we got that view over there. Goodbye Inverness. contrast between road walking and trail walking was exactly what I needed. Peace, tranquility and awesome views to take in. That right there then is the first glimpse of Loch Ness I've had and we're just going to carry on along it apparently now along the Great Glen Way all the way to Fort William and we started at Inverness so it should take me around five or six days hopefully. And if I put some work in, I could probably do it sooner. Every now and again, I'd come across drinking water taps in the middle of nowhere. These were literally lifesavers for me. By this time, I'd become in, air quotes, walking fit, and I was getting used to the weight on my back. Every night, I'd roll my legs and feet with a can of mosquito spray I had. It's a pretty makeshift, but it worked. So it's day 10. We're about five miles from a town called Fort Augustus. And that there is Loch Ness. I'm just carrying on right along it. And what a view it is. After walking the length of Loch Ness, I jumped onto the Caledonian Canal towpath and one evening a pretty magical thing happened to me. Just sat on this bench, shoes off, let my feet breathe. I think I'm going to set up here. I've been going for, I don't know, hours. It's like seven o'clock and there's a little way down. If you can see like there, I'm going to go for a little dip in the Caledonian Canal. Freshen up and uh, get straight to bed. I'm just sitting here like this. The one thing I noticed about the Caledonian Canal was that it was so picturesque. It belonged on a postcard. The walking was easy, flat, just straight walking paths for miles and miles. So we just met a lad and we got speaking and he was like, we basically just asked each other where you're off and I was like, oh, I'm landing, mate, nothing, you know, not too far. He was like, oh, I've just done that. Well, he's doing the opposite way to me currently. So he started at Land's End and he's going to General Groats. 
So I was getting all the lowdown off him and like what it's like. And he's like, I've got some, for me anyway, I've got some good uh, tracks, pretty easy stuff coming up. And the bit I was worried about, not worried about, but a bit skeptical about is uh, where to take, like what kind of route to take while I was in England. And he just said, go through like Cheshire way, which I'm going anyway. And head between like the path of Wales and England. Been like the board a bit, so happy days. But he started in May and right now it's like the 20th of July. So he's got a good two weeks left. So around two and a half, three months I'm looking at. So yeah, I've got all like the lowdown from it. I feel so much better now. It's a beautiful day. Caledonian Canal. We'll keep going. So that there is Ben Nevis from about 15 miles away right now. And you can still see it's July and the snow is still on the mountain. One morning I was rudely woken up from a nap by an Aria fighter jet. This is when I decided to jet off into Fort William. Grabbed a coffee and ironically there was a Caledonian sleeper train waiting outside as if to tempt me to go back home. The same train I used to get to the top of Scotland. I needed a shower. I didn't smell that good, so I booked a hotel room. Seven pound. This was. Oh, I feel so much better. I just had a shower, en suite shower. <laughs> Amazing. I'm living in luxury right now. But yeah, happy days, man. I feel really good. The morning after, I sampled the local delicacy, haggis. Meh. Four out of ten. I set off and toured Fort William for most of the day, but that evening, I set up camp at the base of Ben Nevis next to the river. Cooled off in the river, ate like a pig and got some rest for the next phase of the walk. The West Island Way is a 154km long walking route between Fort William and Milne Gavi near Glasgow. One word, hills. It was one of the hottest days of the year and there were parts of the trail which were vast and pretty remote. Right now then, I'm headed along the West Highland Way, all the way around, just up for a water break. Mountains to the left and the right of me. Oh, it's so hot, one of the hottest days of the year in Scotland so far. Running low on the wet stuff, sunburnt and sick of walking, I came across my idea of an oasis during that moment. Such a long day, so dehydrated. I really, oh, I can't even speak. I basically banked on everything. I've still got some water, but I really need a, like a, just a bathe. So luckily there was a little plunge pool over there, running water. Should be able to fill up from this as well with my water filter. Oh, happy days. I am so hot. Okay, let's go in there. For a lot of the West Highland way I was alone, but the good alone. I could be left to my own devices, experiencing the world and challenging myself. I didn't know why people were so scared to backpack Britain alone. I was loving it. Do, 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 do. Oh, what's that? Oh, just a laptop and a charger. That's normal. Oh, oh mate, it's like an obstacle course. Oh, my legs, it's too late for the day. Let's see what it is. So I've just set my camp up next to the river and I was just sitting down just about to take my shoes off and through the trees, hopefully you can see, right there, there's a stag, a big stag, look at that, right there, about 30 metres away. At this point of the West Highland Way, this was the peak of the heatwave, 30 degrees in Scotland, which is unheard of. Cold beer at the end of the day, and sometimes in the morning, was absolutely necessary. It wasn't long before I started to reach the shores of Loch Lomond. 39 kilometres in length with overgrown walking tracks, a knock-on effect of the pandemic. It's like being in a jungle. I think it just goes to show how fast nature reclaims its land back from humans. In a hundred years, our towns and cities, there'll be nothing left of them. I'm not too far from Glasgow now and that is the only hill slash mountain I can see. There's a few in the distance but they're really small and I'm so happy to see the back of them. I made it to Milne Gavi, the end point of the West Highland Way for me. I decided to book a hotel and head into Glasgow. 
This is what a £25 hotel gets you in the middle of Glasgow. That's loud, but well, it doesn't matter. So I've got bathroom, pretty clean, pretty modern shower. That's good. I need to turn it off. That's too loud. Like a little lawn. Is it a closet? Yeah. Got a TV. Just a bed. Simple, but I've got sockets to charge from. I've got a kettle to make coffee and tea. Let's go. Um, yeah, everything's there. I'm just going to sort my stuff out, charge the stuff, and just let my feet rest. So the past three days I've been without a phone. I'm about 15 miles away from Gretna, which is on the border with Scotland and England. I was listening to music and my earphones got tangled in um, like the chest part of my backpack. Dropped on the floor. The screen wasn't cracked, but the touchscreen stopped working, so I was screwed. And yeah, it's just pretty bad. So I didn't have a I didn't have my map for three days. So I just followed the cycle path from I think it's cycle path seventy four all the way down to Carlisle. Got into Carlisle last night, stayed in the hotel, and this morning. Went to a phone shop, fixed my screen and touch screen so it works so we can we can record. But yeah, I'm about 15, 20 miles away, like east of Carlisle now. I'm heading, I don't know what town it's called, but I'm going to go on to the Pennine Way, all the way down to the Peak District. That's the plan, so yeah, should be good, should be good. But the past few days, it's just been following crappy roads, listening to lots of traffic, Bored out my mind. We've got like the river there. It looks a bit murky, so I'm not gonna go for a swim. But so, yeah, you got above, you can hear. Big pillars, protected from the wind right here. Not too shabby, let my socks dry off. Just had something to eat. I'm gonna brush my teeth and get an early night, but not a bad location. But we're in England and wild camping's illegal. So I've got to keep down and just keep quiet. Some more road walking. I'm meeting a great lady called Sue. So let's go check it out if you have a passing. Yeah. And that's Sue. So. I was in Yorkshire. I'm pretty happy now. Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, I've left all the main roads, all the noise behind. And I'm heading towards the Pennine Way. I'm about nine, ten miles away from the Pennine Way. So I'm going to jump on at a town called, well, it's like a little village or something. It's called Keld, K-E-L-D. Jump on there and just go all the way down. Let's have a look. Got a mate with me right there. It was almost like the second I set foot onto the Pennine Way, it started to pour down with rain. For a week straight, I was drenched. This is like the first proper downpour we've had. All through Scotland, it's literally light drizzle. That's all I had, luckily. And now I'm in England, it's like, I don't know if you can see. You can probably hear it, but yeah, I'm just getting shelter under the tree. But welcome to England, I suppose. My waterproofs became so saturated that it wasn't even worth wearing them anymore. My socks and shoes, soaking. My feet started to suffer from being wet for 12 hours a day too. It was vital I had my feet out while I was in the tent or I would get something called immersion foot, which isn't good. I used baby powder, do you know the white chalky stuff? It dried my feet out and helped them heal. I did this twice a day and it was a lifesaver for the walk. When I said it rained for a week straight, I mean it didn't stop. Ever. It rained and rained <laughs> and poured. That bit right there, that bog, was the hardest bit of the walk so far. Good state of me. I just went in, the, the bog went up to there, my knee. There was a dead sheep carcass right over there. Yeah, so we obviously, your sheep probably drowned in it. And I went through it, just being an idiot I am. And got absolutely drenched. <laughs> Still good though. Despite all of the bad weather, I was enjoying the challenge. This is exactly why I was doing it. So I've just been thinking on the, up this hill. You know, like how can anyone moan at the life we live nowadays? It's so easy. Fresh running water, a nice hot shower. <sighs> Fresh, clean, 
nice smelling clothes to put on every day staying dry warm electricity internet oh my god i can go on and i'm here smelling of crap quite literally going up a hill soaking wet feet are just soaked i just yeah this is why i'm doing it this is exactly why i'm doing it just to appreciate the niceties of life i'm just drenched it's been like rain all day we're lucky honestly you cannot moan decent view but it's all foggy and raining but yeah i've just uh had one of them moments this is exactly why i'm doing it and i'm loving it i'm not really feet are killing but it's all good not far to go just entered my home county Cheshire let's go I'm like 33 miles away from my parents house where I grew up let me just quickly show you where I camped tonight What a view. It's cold, but amazing. So it's pretty early in the morning now, and um, I'm literally one walking day away from my parents where I'm doing a pit stop for a couple of days. So I can go, out, go back, rest my legs, and just chill out for a bit before I set off again for Land's End. But yeah, it's Probably the earliest I've set off. The sun is just rising. And I feel good. I feel really good. Can't wait just to not do anything. I've had a few days rest. I feel good. But I kept putting it off, you know. I kept throughout the day, it's like four o'clock right now. And I kept saying to myself, 10 minutes we'll leave. And I kept putting it back, 10 minutes, just yeah, it's the hardest bit. I really think that's the hardest bit of anything. It's just starting it getting started once you're out doing it it's easy it's just initially getting started it's the hardest bit but we're on our way going to Oz Westry and I can get on the I think the trail is called Offers Dyke and just yeah along the Welsh and English border so I've broken it down into four stages just to kind of like for my mind really I think we're coming up to Offers Dyke Path. Is this it? Hopefully. I don't know. It said on the map, it should be. Yeah, there we go. There we go, let's just get straight on it now. So Offers Dyke is a 285 kilometer long distance footpath that runs between the English and Welsh border. I never did any research about the route. Whenever I think of Wales, I think of hills, grey skies and rain. Ugh, I wish I could tell you different, but that's exactly what I got. Just finished walking for the day. Set up in a forest. The pathway's like that way, up that hill. So that's good. Got a fire going for the first time since, yeah, I haven't done one on a walk. I'm just drying all my socks. They're soaking wet today. It's been raining, but these are drying quickly. I've just walked through a massive orchard full of fresh kind of like green, red apples, damsons. I think they were cherries. So I've got, you can see, two apples. And then that there, you can see is a damson. I've never tried a damson. I just Googled it. You can eat them, but apparently they're really tart and they're best cooked and added you know, with sugar and stuff like that, but I'm gonna try it. I've never tried one. But that, I'm not an apple guy, to be honest, but that was probably the best, sweetest, most flavorful apple I've ever had. Just entering in a little village, like a really small village in the middle of nowhere called Longtown. There we go. But over there, you don't understand. Hopefully I can zoom in. 
says village shop. Sure, it was a long town. I always feel it's the little things that keep you going. And it was finding fresh fruit, seeing a little shop in the middle of nowhere. These things lifted my mood and spurred me on to keep going throughout the whole walk. I'm a simple man, I know. Whilst walking along Offers Dyke, I stumbled upon a sick sheep. If you're squeamish, I advise you to look away right now. Oh, there's a little sheep or I don't know if it's a lamb. It's alive, but barely moving. Oh, I don't know what to do. All right, I'm gonna try feed it or something. Come on, mate. Do you want some? Oh, the poor thing is proper. I think it's like a really bad infection. All right, I've got some like Savlon. It's not gonna do anything, antiseptic cream, but it reminds me of my dog. That's why I can't leave it. I left the sheep and started to take quiet farm roads towards Bristol. Last night then, I stayed in a, it was a bed and breakfast. And usually I just, I've just been staying in cheap hotels, you know, just as long as I have a bed and a shower. But it was the cheapest place in the area. It was like 55 pound or something. So I was like, all right, I'll get one. Cause I needed to charge my batteries anyway for my, you know, to charge my phone up and stuff. And it, I needed a shower and whatever. I was in there, but it was so posh. The owners of it, there was a man and a woman, they were really nice, but I felt so out of place. You're like waiting on your hand and foot with your the cutlery laid out, you know, like posh, very posh. Bringing like afternoon tea out with three different spoons, like a pot of tea, all that kind of stuff. And I just felt, it was so awkward that I am not, that type of person. I'm the type of person to eat a takeaway with a spoon and just one spoon only. I just, I don't think I'll be ever staying in a bed and breakfast again. It, they were nice enough and it was a nice place, but I just felt out of place. But uh, it was in a town called Kington, I think. It's close to Hereford. Uh, right now I'm, I'm about six miles away from Hay on Wye. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like 40 miles away from Bristol, which is really close. Uh, the weather's just really nice now, I'll show you. Doesn't look too nice, but I don't know, for the past two and a half, three weeks, it has been pouring down every day without fail. Oh, you can see the blue sky there. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd sit down, have a chat with you. I'm feeling good. My feet have been in a bit of a crap state the past few days, just because they've, they've been constantly wet on my socks. When I've been drying them, they go like really hard and they rub on your feet and it's just, yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, should be good if it dries out. What does that even mean? The world's first book town. Makes no sense. <laughs> hey, on why? For the first time in the walk, the monotony was eating away at me. So I'm definitely two thirds of the walk done. One third left. I want to say 200 miles, maybe 250. It's not that much when I put it all into perspective, but the hardest thing now is mentally just keeping going. I can deal with all the aches and pains and blisters and whatever. Just boredom, that's what's getting me now. I've listened to so many podcasts and music and watched videos, and I just cannot watch anymore, I'm so bored. Like, it's just, the brain has just gone to mush. And especially when uh, being on your own, you're always in your thoughts and you just, you get sick of yourself, it is, it's difficult. So it's just that now, keeping going. And I try to break it up each hour just to take my pack off, five minutes, sit down, and just have a rest. But yeah, I'm constantly in like a state of, um, just, just after you've woken up, if you know what that feels like, which everyone does, like hazy kind of mind and just in like a brain fog, that's it's constantly like that all day now. Just boredom, my brain, I can barely remember things. It's like I'm getting dementia. I know it's not funny, but it's kind of like that. So, yeah, it's one of these things you don't really think about. It's just the boredom, but it is, it's, that's the biggest thing now. Whoop. Bristol, going over the bridge right now. Oh, you can feel it shaking. Oh, that's not nice. Look at that. Pretty windy. I'm 
just come across that. I've come, just there's so many of them kind of tracks that aren't actually there, where like farmers just forget to put them where they're supposed to be. And because I have like the OS maps online, I have access to every one of them and it's like, like this, it's just a dense jungle. Nettles everywhere. I'm just going through them, getting stung to death. Got stung by a bee, and or a wasp. I haven't been stung for like since I was a little kid, and it killed. I'd, like luckily, it hasn't swelled up, but there, where it's red, is a killer. Um, but yeah, right now, just crossed the Seven Bridge a couple hours ago. Sorry about the camera work. It's just it's a bit shaky. This bridge is like half falling in. But yeah, the uh, I don't know what road that is. The M4 is it? I'm just basically parallel to that. There's a seven bridge. Come across that before. And wow, it is hot. So we've been following this path through a farmer's field, and we're next to the I think it's the I don't know. It's a busy motorway kind of thingy near Bristol. But look, this should be a pathway and it's massively overgrown, no one uses it anymore. So, I'm just looking for a place to stay. It's actually quite good. This is a little road, there's a stile, and that's like a busy road right there. There's a bridge. It's pretty busy right now, loud, but in a few hours, the noise will die down. But at the bottom, let me just show you, it's like a jungle. You can, tell, you can just tell no one uses this. Put the bottom right there, a little bit of a wood, and it's flat. So I'm gonna set up camp. Pretty good find, actually. Happy with that. I got to Bristol, topped upon supplies, and set off for the final leg of the journey towards Land's End. I was in the groove of things, and the end was in sight. I started to enjoy it and take everything in, whereas at the beginning, it was a mission to finish as quick as possible. Take a look at this, there's a little deer right there. See it? You just can't see it. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> just found the Thomas the Tank Engine football. I created games for myself. It usually made the day go quicker. So, for the past day and a half, I want to say, two days, I haven't really recorded anything. Just been walking and yeah, just getting in the groove of it. But I uh, passed Taunton yesterday, it was. Um, just passed a, a little town called Tiverton, went through it, chilled out in there for a couple for about an hour, it was two hours, and uh, setting off down just some country lanes. Has anybody ever heard of Fox Bark? No, me neither. I can't believe it. There's a fox. It keeps like barking. I've had to like scare it away just by like shouting and making noise. <laughs> see? It's like stalking me. Oh, I can't see. So annoying. I was finally into Devon and I decided to stop at a campsite. The best part about it though was that they sold fresh cow's milk in one litre bottles. I was in heaven. So I've walked about 25 miles today, just over. And yesterday it was 23 or something. So I've done in two days about 48 miles, which is probably the most combined in two days of the whole of this walk. I feel okay though. On a really steep downhill. And then it's like on the map, there's like three arrows, meaning downhill, uphill. And there's like three uphills after this downhill. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this. This is really steep. Look at that. I just had to go through a hedgerow to get to the track I'm walking on. And I, I just thought to myself, I'm so glad I'm not in Scotland right now because I would have had like 15, 20 ticks crawling over me, biting me, midges attacking me, just insects trying to bite you. Whereas in England, we're really lucky. It was really benign and it's nice. In Cornwall, I found another fresh milk farm. This one had a dispenser, which was great. Cornish milk from a dispenser. This is like a farm. Oh, wow. So you just dispense 
your milk, fresh milk. One pound twenty. One litre of fresh milk, that's amazing. So the past few days I've been taking the the main roads basically to Land's End just to cut the journey. Not short but quick, just to make it quicker. And I'm finally here, I'm about a mile and a half away from the Land's End signpost. I'm on the southwest coastal path, but take a look at this sunset. The iPhone doesn't do it justice, but that's probably the best sunset I've ever seen. It's come full circle. At the start when I was at John O'Groats, I camped on a cliff the first night. And I'm doing it right now, right at the end. What an ending. And right over there is Land's End. So the signpost is like there, I think. I set my tent up for the last time and had my last I'm camping meal of the trip. Pasta eye fungi. I've had six of these in a row and I'm sick of them, but <laughs> I'm just going to enjoy it. I'm going to try and enjoy it. Look at that with the netting. Oh, wow. This is my view. I'm very lucky right now. Land's End, right there. <laughs> Speechless. Alright. Just woke up. It's, I don't know, it's like five to six in the morning. I'm gonna get ready and then go see that sign. Just packing my stuff away and I feel a little bit sad. <laughs> This little tent, this sleeping pad, all my stuff in there, it's got me through almost two months of backpacking Britain. Madness. Let's go, hold on. I can't believe we made it. What the fuck? And there is the sign. Oh my god. Lands End Hotel. <laughs> Mad. There's even a bench there so I can sit down afterwards. did it the camera i would have loved to fly my drone but they didn't because there's an airport nearby you can't actually fly a drone near here oh well that's the least of my worries right now i can go home i can get the train and just oh i can't wait anyway i'd best start planning the next adventure i don't know what i don't know what's going to top backpack in britain but i'm sure i'll think of something well, that was worth it.